Hi everyone, my name is Carl. I am 39 years old. I'm one of the care assistant uh, for Winchester Bluebird Care. I joined the army when I was 18. Um, the regiment I joined was the 1st Battalion, the Princess of Wales Royal Regiment. Um, I served 12 years with them. Um, been to places like Afghanistan, Iraq, Kosovo. Um, you get to travel, not only on um, military um, work, but you also go on military exercises, like places to Kenya, Canada, Poland. I was injured in Afghanistan um, 2009. I was standing next to a compound wall. The enemy fired a rocket-propelled grenade, which hit the compound wall where I was stood, and the fragmentation hit both my legs. Um, I was unconscious for quite a bit. Uh, when I came round, I was facing the, facing the sky, and I thought, oh, I, might, I must have, you know, fell asleep, or because it was a, a long, arduous day. Um, I tried standing up, but I couldn't feel both my legs. I sustained um, shrapnel injuries to my left knee, as well as my right ankle. I had the initial surgery out in um, Cambastion, and then three days later, I was flown to the UK, to Birmingham Hospital. And I had another three surgeries done there. And then, um, not only that, I had about two and a half years of rehab and surgeries. Um, which I had to do all the military tests again, which I passed, and then I deployed again the second time to Afghanistan. In Iraq, uh, 2004, we were involved in an ambush uh, where my company commander was injured really badly. I had to climb out of the vehicle and not only um, try and get my commander back into the vehicle, but all my crew members and the guys in the back, they were all injured as well. So I had to uh, try and keep his airway open while under fire and try and um, command the vehicle back to um, our base. At that moment, uh, you don't think of, you know, bullets flying your way. Uh, it's all solely about the person that is injured. So for me, it, it wasn't um, that big of a deal. Uh, but when you got back into camp like two or three days after, then you realize, you know, the, the effort you put in. And it's sometimes can be quite scary when, when you think of it, like when you're in a safe location. Um, but yeah, um, my company commander uh, recovered well. All my team members recovered. Uh, like when I left the military, I wanted a new challenge. I wanted something to match the high degree of what, like in the military, um, you get to go on tours or uh, on exercises and your the tempo is very high. And I wanted, when I left, I wanted something to match that. And when I came across Bluebird Care, I thought, you know, give it a go. You never know. So here I am eight years after. So I'm... I'm I'm enjoying it. It just felt natural um, because coming from uh, my background, I'm from Fiji. And for us, we look after our grandparents at home. And even though we have care homes, it's not so big back home. So uh, we live like in a communal base. So we look after our, our grandparents, our mothers, our aunties and uncles. So it, it's, for me, it's a natural progression. Uh, when I joined Bluebird Care, I joined uh, initially as a live-in carer, a uh, live-in care assistant. And then um, I progressed through um, from a live-in care assistant to domiciliary care assistant, 
where I drive from house to house looking after our customers. And then I got promoted to senior, uh, senior care assistant. And then I worked my way up to, at this present time, I'm one of the community team leaders. Um, I'd say I'm calm and collected. Um, I try and be, you know, fluid with things, not overthinking things when I'm doing my job. Because sometimes when you overthink, it just adds on pressure. For some customers, they, um, they love music. Some of them like Elvis country music, um, some of them, some, sometimes you walk in there and they, sometimes they are depressed, they, they feel sad, they're crying and I try and find avenues, ways to cheer them up and sometimes I sing to them, like songs like Somewhere Over the Rainbow or You Are My Sunshine, like little things like that, just to brighten their day. For me, uh, after a day doing care work, um, driving home, I run my day through my head, like my first care visit in the morning, all the way through to my last one. And just asking myself, have I done the best that I could for all our customers? Like for me, all our customers feel like family. Um, I always try and make sure like um, to treat them with utmost dignity and respect, especially because they're quite uh, frail and you know, you, you want them to feel comfortable as well as safe around you. So I've always like make sure to tell them I'm here for you, you know? I'm here for you. you, you don't need to be worried or afraid of anything, I'm here for you. That's why I'm, that's why I'm a, a care assistant to come and help you, you know. And always for me it's always a self-centered approach, involve them in their daily care, make sure that, you know, you give them options like how do you like your tea, how do you like your coffee, or getting them dressed. Give them options like, oh would you like to wear this or that, you know. Um, even with food, what food would they like? Little things like that. So, when I go in, like uh, when I visit them, um, I always picture myself if that was my grandmother or my grandfather, how would you feel? You know, you want the best for them. So, when I do my job, I make sure I try and do the best, I give my best for them. It is very important, especially for them, it is a place of safety, um, somewhere familiar. It's probably their family home ever since, and they've got loads of memories. They've got photos on the wall, little things like that. It reminds them of their family. And I'd, I'd probably be in the same situation if I get to that age, you know. I want somewhere familiar, I want somewhere safe. And home is where the heart is, so, yes. Uh, she's a very lovely lady. Uh, we provide care for her twice a day. Uh, we get up in the morning, um, making sure she's washed, dressed, um, get her breakfast ready. The chats with Margaret can be about the weather, or it can be about food. Or sometimes it can be about asking me, oh, have you got a girlfriend? Why, ha why are you working all these hours? It, it can be she wants something done, like uh, because her hands, she cannot feel properly. Uh, sometimes she wants things done and she cannot use her, hand, uh, her fingers. So like just little things like taking the drain plug out of the sink, that can be quite hard for her. She had a funny situation, um, I think it was last year, that uh, 
The neighbor was clearing out her garage and found a shell of, a, I think, a World War I or II shell in her garage. And they had to call the, uh, the military bomb disposal to come over. And the whole street was closed down. So she was the celebrity of, of that time, yes. Tommy is an amazing uh, young man. Uh, when I started with Bluebird, uh, we initially went in to look after Tommy uh, three times a day. Um, like in the morning, get him up for college, um, and then after school, and then in the evening for his, um, uh, his bath nights. Um, Tommy suffered from uh, muscular dystrophy. Um, so at the uh, young age, he, he was in a wheelchair. Even though his uh, condition deteriorated, but his mind was sharp, which is an amazing thing about Tommy. Every night when I went to, for his care visit, even without seeing me, he'll ask his dad, is he in the drive? And even before seeing me, he'll shout out, are you okay? So uh, Tommy is like a little brother to me. Um, some nights he couldn't sleep, uh, so we just sat up whole night just chatting about little things he's worried about, you know. Um, I can picture him like myself in that situation when I got injured. There's loads of things running through your mind and you feel like there's no hope, but when you got someone to talk to, it eases the burden. With Tommy, it's always, every day is always fun. You know, we, we always try and pack everything we could in his day. Like we'd get up in the morning, we'd do breakfast together. He'll direct us to what he wants for breakfast. And, and then after that, we'll do other stuff like get his Legos out. And he's always uh, directing us like, for his care, which is very important. For him, he had loads of questions about, you know, um, he was, a f sometimes he was afraid to sleep. And I always say to him, don't worry, I'm, I'm praying for you, I'm here. So I normally just uh, put my hands on his forehead and just talk to him and say a prayer next to him. And it eases him. And little things like that, or even singing to him, or make him laugh, or tell him about a funny joke. It was very difficult, yes. Um, not only for me, but for his parents. It was, he was the center of their world. And <clears throat> even though I don't have a son or daughter, I feel they're paid. And it's, they always say that children are meant to bury their parents, not the other way. I felt I've, I've done the best I could for Tommy. You know, and, and I hope that he felt that, you know, we've done the best we can for him. And it was amazing every time you, when I was there, before I went home, you know, he, he gave me a hug and said, thank you, thank you so much for today. So little things like that we take for granted sometimes. Every now and then when I'm at the office, I go over to his grave and just say hello every now and then. So it wasn't easy seeing him deteriorate. So that's why when I try and do my job 
to the best of my ability. Some customers, um, like female customers, uh, it's quite daunting for them, like when they first, initially when they meet me, because they see I've got tattoos and before I had big hair and a beard and they are quite, it's quite daunting for them. But once we get to chat and know each other, you, you find like common bonds with them. Their husbands or probably one of their sons could have been in the military. And that's how we, you know, we, we get to know each other and build up a report, a relationship with the, with the customers. And then for me, it's very rewarding when you leave them with a smile and they ask, oh, are you, are you going to come back? When are you coming back? For me, that is the reward. It, it, it's a signal for me. I've, I've you know, done the best as I can. I'd say uh, for a man to be um, doing, uh, become a care assistant, you know, the, the role is, you have to be proud. It's, you have to think that, you know, one day I'd pr probably be in the same situation and I need help. And to be honest, a lot of gentlemen out there, they need help as well. And they are happy to see you when you walk in and, and you introduce yourself to them and they're happy and, you know, it's, uh, I'd say, not to be shy. It's, it's a very good, um, good job. And I think it's, it's stereotyped that a lot of women do care work, not men. But it's not true, you know. Um, men do care work as well. I feel as if, yes, I've, I'm giving like um, something worthwhile, you know, helping people that, that cannot help themselves. You know, most of them, their families don't live close by. Some of them, their families live overseas. Some of them, they don't have families and you are the, the only person they see. And for, for them to have that support is very important. It gives them continuity, um, like living in their homes. So that is very important, yes. The people that you look after, the customers that you look after, they know the value that you bring to their lives. And without you in their life, you know, it's, it's going to be hard for them. So for me as a, as a male carer, breaking down barriers, with our female customers, building up a, a report, you know, bonding with them. It's, it's very important. For any other man or anyone that is um, looking to do something different, I'd challenge them and I'd say, you know, give it a go. You never know. Care work is something that not a lot of people think that is worthwhile. But for me, it's very rewarding, especially when you look after someone uh, that is vulnerable. And to see the joy in their face after a day, you know, like initially when you go in there, you help them out, set them up for the day. And when you leave them with a smile and them asking you, thank you so much, you know, they thank you and, and they ask you, oh, when, when are you going to come back? When are you going to come and see me again? Uh, for me, that is very rewarding. Um, I'd say care work is very, you know, very important, especially nowadays that with uh, changes in medication and things like that, people are living longer. So people need care. And I'd say we need more carers. And it, it'd be lovely to have some more men join the industry. You know, it, it, it'll be worthwhile. I think. Skies are gray. You never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine.
shine.